I wanted to talk about this whole idea that Biden's building a wall, where he said that he was, you know, there's there's claims that he's going to uh, restart the border wall. And uh, what's funny about that is in August, he denounced building the wall. He denounced the wall period on the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, and he said he was going to get going to get rid of land seizures. Right there, the Texas had a problem where um, people were getting their their land seized. Um, uh, people are going to get their land seized, and uh, and then they and then they build a bunch of shit. Um, you know, they build like a wall, they build a fence, they build something like that on people's property that they have seized. This is. This is how it used to work. So he basically said he was going to cancel all of that kind of shit. Uh, but he lied because he is going to, he is is planning on rebuilding that wall. And what he claims he's doing is, oh, but he's just building up the, the holes that are in the existing walls. That's what he's trying to do, right? Because, oh, we have a border crisis. We have a crisis at the border. There's, there's, there's all of these refugees coming to America because America is fucked with their country. <laughs> And they're coming over here looking for, like, a new life. Oh, no! <laughs> which, is, which is total bullshit, right? Like, if you, if you actively fuck with another country, if you actively put, uh, install a dictator in a country so that you can economically benefit from it, uh, you know, uh, where, and the casualty of, um, of that country is its people... Uh, then uh, you got to take the refugees that come along with it. That should just be a fucking rule. If you want to run psyops to fucking destroy another country, you should take oh, you should take that country's refugees. If you wage war against another country, you should take that country's refugees. Perhaps then it will prevent U.S. imperialism from fucking with other countries. The question always remains, right, when all this stuff happens is they go, oh, you know, the, the narrative always spins to, oh, well, they're coming over here because, you know, life is better in the United States, but they got to come over here the right way. They got to come over here the way that the United States tells you you can come over here, which basically means you have to be a rich, uh, rich immigrant or at least an upper middle class immigrant. Uh, the people that are truly suffering in these countries that are looking for a better life, that are working really hard in their country, that come over here and work doubly hard in America, uh, you know, they have to kind of have some income already. And you have to be the model immigrant, which means what? Which means that you don't criticize the Democratic Party, which means that you don't, uh, you, you, you know, you don't push back against the establishment. You follow the rules and you be the token. You follow, you fall in line with all of the stereotypes. You don't call out blatant racism from liberals. You don't call out blatant racism uh, and, and disrespect from, from uh, you know, the quote left, like the faux, the faux left, right? Uh, and uh, and you be the good little immigrant because if you're not the good little immigrant, if you're not the immigrant that's that likes to get tousled on the head and is basically a Chuck Lorre fucking stereotype of oh man the brown immigrant boy is afraid of girls ooh scary girls and let's respect the the hijab but also still show what a makeover looks like if you're not playing that part then then we got to build a ball and we got to fucking you know keep you out of the country. But that's but that's the lie that's sold to us, right? Is is like it, people don't come here because they're quote you know looking for the American dream. They just don't want to be in a, a dictatorship anymore. And you can make the arguments whether America is or isn't a dictatorship. Uh, but people people very likely like people don't want to leave their country of origin. People don't want to leave their homes, right? Especially when you are. Someone that has built a life in a particular country. Now, I, I I moved here when I was eight years old, so you know I didn't really have a crazy attachment in life to to India. I mean, I I have memories there, I have family there, I I do have a sense of nostalgia for India, but I didn't build a life. I didn't I didn't build a family. You know, I I hadn't been working at a job. I hadn't uh, made loads and loads of friends yet. You know, I was in that awkward transitionary period, but my parents did. And so for my parents to come here, there has to be a good reason to. Now, in, in lots of ways, you can come here with like a visa, right? You can come here with like a visa or, or be sponsored for a green card, so on and so forth. Various different ways that you can make it here. But 
usually when it's my it, when it's migrants coming here, not you know the the quote undocumented immigrants, which is who get demonized the most in this argument. Uh, they come here because they're trying to escape trouble. That's 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 the reason why animals migrate. Whenever whenever there is trouble, whenever there is there are problems with where you're at, you have to migrate to a new to a new place. Uh, like animal migration happens when you run out of resources in a particular area. Right. When they've kind of eaten all the food and, you know, have kind of have, have run out of water supply and there is higher predators in that area, then it's time to move. It's time to keep moving because, you know, and then they'll come back again to the next, you know, the next year and stuff. But it's the same reason why human beings would migrate. Right. Human beings migrate because their resources are in trouble in their in their countries in Central, Central and Latin America. A lot of these countries have been fucked with by U.S. imperialism. Their resources aren't uh, being divvied up the right way. There is a dictatorship in place. There is a, a military authoritarian government in place. Uh, and these people are looking for just something better than that, which happens to be the United States. And they come through here and they don't have the money to go through the legal channels. And by the way, the legal channels, being that someone that, being someone that has gone through every level of the legal channel of being in this country it's a fucking mess it is long it is uh inconvenient it is meant to be that way it is expensive it is not easy to navigate uh you know you need an immigration lawyer so you got to pay for an immigration lawyer to do the right paperwork you have to get visas renewed if, if you're on a visa program even if you're on a green card, every 10 years, you have to get that renewed. Um, and again, all of that is dependent on you being the model immigrant, right? If you have any sort of discrepancy with the law at all, it could jeopardize the whole process. So, you know, it's not easy to be an immigrant, period. It's even harder to be an undocumented immigrant. And these undocumented immigrants that are coming through don't have the luxury of um, like I consider myself lucky that I had the luxury of waiting for years on end without my life being in in immediate you know immediate volatile danger. I wasn't trying to escape a coup. I wasn't trying to escape a, a military dictatorship. I came here because my dad came here, and you know everything was kind of depend on my dad, and I don't have a great relationship with him. But you know that's I consider myself lucky in that sense. But these people don't have the time to go through bureaucracy and figure out a lawyer and make sure that they have $10,000 saved up and they can figure out how to get here. Like, we were lucky to be able to afford plane tickets and an apartment and all that kind of shit here. These people don't have that luxury. So if you're a country that fucks with other countries, then you should expect refugees and you should fucking take them into your country. Human beings migrate when when there is exploitation wars economic strife all caused by other human beings that's when people migrate to a different country and all of this is beneficial to capitalism it's all beneficial to capitalism because capitalism thrives capitalism wants the undocumented immigrant but in order but it can't just come out and be like hey this is good for us because we get to exploit the fucking shit out of them uh, and and then we get to use them as a negotiating tool to ensure wage slavery for you know the, the the working class of America. They can't just outright come out and say it. So so they have to spin it to be like, oh look, these undocumented immigrants are stealing your jobs. That's how they frame it. They're stealing your jobs. When in reality, uh, the the problems lie in. And the fact that corporations are hiring undocumented immigrants to work on factory floors, to work, you know, at meat processing plants, to work at Amazon warehouses. And who gets punished for it? It's not the corporation that hired them. It's the immigrant themselves. And it's the working class beside them. These immigrants work for way less than minimum wage because what are they going to do? Who are they going to report to? Because if they report it to somebody, then they might get in trouble for being in this country undocumented.
right? So who's the victim in this situation? It's an exploitative system. So capitalism fucking loves it because now they get to pay less than minimum wage for a bunch of employees, not cover any sort of, not give them any sort of benefits. And that don't, they don't have to worry about health coverage or any of that sort of shit. And, and they get to use it as a negoti- negotiating point, right? Like if, if there is some kind of worker uprising where let's say at the Tyson's food plant, they're like, we're going to go on strike because we want hazard pay. They'll be like, fine, go on hazard pay. We can hire some undocumented workers that'll, that'll work for a, a third of what you normally make. And the company turns over a profit anyway. So fuck off. So they get to use immigrants as, and, and then that creates, that creates the divide, right? That creates the divide of like, oh, they're stealing the jobs. But who gets in trouble? It's always the working class, whether you're an undocumented worker or you're, you're an American worker, it doesn't matter. The working class is the victim in the immigration crisis along with the immigrants. So if you're, if you are a factory worker, if you are, uh, you know, someone that works in the, uh, in an assembly line or a meat packing plant or whatever, you should be siding with the immigrants. You should be saying that, you know, you know what, the undocumented immigrants don't deserve to be exploited that way, and neither do we, and we're going to stand in solidarity with them and take care of each other and, and, and say, fuck you to the boss that doesn't want to give us a living wage. So this fight for borders just becomes a, a exploitative control point for capitalism. That's really what it boils down to. And the immigration system is a total, total fucking mess. It needs to be completely overhauled at this point. It's an administrative problem that you're trying to solve with with a fucking wall by putting by by torturing migrant children by putting them in cages. And that is what he's doing, by the way. That is what Joe Biden is doing. He is still putting them in cages. You can call them immigrant detention centers, or what the fuck did they call them? There's there's something in Dallas called the immigrant decompression centers. That's what they call them, which is like a very clockwork orange way to fucking put that, isn't it? We're gonna decompress the immigrants. It either it either sounds like they're they're like taping their eyes open and making them watch every fucking Stallone, Seagal, and Van Damme movie from the eighties that show America is the most powerful, even though most of those people are not American, right? Like like all of the American heroes that they championed, like Van Damme's, I think Belgian, the Schwarzenegger is is Austrian, uh, you know, and then you have Carl Weathers, who's a black dude. Like that's you know. As if black people are respected in America, all of a sudden when you can use them as your action hero to promote some sort of like capitalist domination, oh, all of a sudden strong black people are American now. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But the point, the whole point of this is like, yeah, the, the, the border crisis is kept a crisis because it splits the working class. And guess who gets to, who gets to reap the rewards of undocumented workers? Corporations. That's who gets to reap the benefits of it. So all of this is is all pro business stuff. That's really what it is. That's really all it is. Cool. Uh, popping over to check out some comments. <laughs> Aiden says, <laughs> "But I want to be a dick. You're not my supervisor." <laughs> this is true. I'm not your supervisor. Uh, Joseph is saying your last stream is still up. Uh, yes, two Krish live streams. True, true. Oh no! So I guess I guess my uh, there was a discrepancy in my last live stream from uh, from Tuesday, and uh, uh, where my you know the whole thing fucking crashed, and uh, uh, I had to like restart the stream, and there was there was a weird thing that happened. So I guess I guess Rockman is still claiming that I'm live. When I'm not, and it has been for the last three days, uh, so I mean the streams are the streams are always up for folks to check out afterwards uh, because they do that replay thing. But I guess it's still up from that glitch that happened, uh, which is fine because I know Rockfin is new, so you know this is a problem that they'll have to address and fix at some other point. Unfortunately. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, 
hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.